Great. Well, thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone, and good morning to and welcome to the Southeastern New York Library Resources Council, or as we affectionately refer to it as Southeastern, uh, our 53rd annual meeting. So we're glad to have you here. Um, I mean, in recognition of the moment that we live in right now and the many feelings, thoughts, and emotions that we're experiencing in this moment of change and how we can change this energy into an inclusive, embracing new order, I would like us to take a moment of silence and reflection to kind of think about where we're at and how, what we can do to, to include everyone in this change. So thank you all and please a moment of silence and reflection. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And now I'm going to introduce our executive director of Southeastern, Tessa Killian. Tessa. Hi, good morning. Thanks. Thank you, Chuck. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Just, I see people are coming in, which is fine. I'm just going to get started with a few housekeeping things. But first of all, I want to welcome you to our 53rd annual meeting. So like we were talking about earlier, you know, before we officially started, in a normal year, we'd be celebrating with you at one of our member sites, enjoying brunch and enjoying each other's company in person. And this year, we're celebrating with you online because of the, you know, New York pause and the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm really proud of the board and the staff and all of you for being so willing to, to try this online. Um, we have a wonderful program for you today that includes our annual business meeting, an award to present lightning presentations from five member organizations, and Lauren Moore, New York State's librarian, is here as our guest. So at the end of the meeting, we've arranged for you to meet in small groups so that you can have a conversation with colleagues, colleagues much like we would do if we were together in person. So we're going to use the breakout rooms and, and give that a try. So just a few housekeeping reminders. Um, Carolyn put everybody on mute to start just so we can avoid background noise. Depending on the bandwidth, we may have to turn off the video, but for right now, it seems to be working. Um, we all know by now that the internet can be, it can be glitchy. Um, so if we have to stop the meeting for some reason, we'll just start it again. And if your connection is lost or you have to leave, please come back. Um, there's, and, and we'll let you back in from the meeting, from the waiting room. Um, please use the chat. You already are. I think that's great to chat with one another. Um, just as a reminder, and I do this for all of our Zoom meetings to let you know that we download the meeting chat. I didn't, um, for this meeting, I'm, I will just use it for, for comments and nice things that people are saying and any links that you share. But when we download that chat, it does include the person-to-person -person, uh, chat as part of that transcript. We are recording the meeting today so that if anybody missed it, um, I know a couple people couldn't make it, they, they, then they can see the presentations. And most of us are presenting from home. Um, so we may see or hear some kids, cats, dogs, um, lawnmowers, um, partners in the background. It's all okay, it's fine, we're doing the best we can in this environment. So let's have some fun and enjoy each other's company and learn about some new projects. One more last thing, or check two more, okay. Um, the presenters can't hear your collective applause. So let's use the features of Zoom to share our reactions with them and give them some positive feedback when they're doing their presenting. I know, I know I'm talking into a void right now. I see some faces, but I can't see all of your faces. So the reactions that we share will be very helpful for all the presenters today. And as Carolyn uh, mentioned, and she's putting in the chat, all of the handouts for today are up on our website, um, including our annual report, last year's minutes. Oh, here I have a slide for that. There's another link. So all these things are up on our website for you to open up in a separate window or if you need to, you know, so you can have a copy of it so you know you can follow along with the program. So I hope you have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a snack, breakfast, and I'm gonna get going with my um, director's report. So Southeastern, along with most of you who've been working remotely since mid-March, I closed the office on March 16th. And since that time, I have been overwhelmed by the creativity, the cooperation, and the resilience of our library workers and the dedication of, the, of all of us to um, continue to make ourselves and our library resources available to the communities that we serve, which is why we came up with the theme today of surviving and thriving in your library. And now that the phased reopening has begun, I know that many of you have plans to restart services back at your libraries or organizations. And we're all keeping in mind the safety of our staff and our community members. You know, all that's the forefront of our mind as we, as we start to reopen New York. So I wanna thank you all for being here, the staff, the presenters, trustees, and members, so who we are. We have 
I think we're up to 91, but we had 137 people register for our annual meeting. We have, um, these numbers have grown, but as of last night, we had 44 people from academic libraries, 50 from public libraries, six from hospital and special libraries, nine folks representing the schools, and nine people from cultural heritage organizations, many guests, and three people registered from the state library. So just as a reminder, as a multi-type library system, Southeastern's community is you. Our mission is to provide you with what you need to serve your communities. We're always looking for common ground or the things that we can do to bring library types together. So now I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about our initiatives over the last year. And I'm gonna start with professional development. Um, this is a picture and image from last year's Fall Into Books conference. This is a conference we co-sponsored with the five BOCES school library systems, the Hudson Library System, Ramco Catskill. I think this was the 20th or the 21st in this image. So it's been happening for a long time. This last year, Southeastern was very involved in census training. Um, Carolyn Bennett Glauda, who you've met this morning, is Southeastern's education and outreach librarian. And she helped manage a statewide program um, that ESLN received, the Empire State Library Network, from the Revson Foundation to offer census training. And this image is from our digital census preparation training that we had in the Hudson Valley back in January. Another example of, of a project that we worked on with the BOCES and Bramapo Catskill was the Banned Book Symposium. And this happened a few weeks before PAUSE um, at Mount St. Mary, hosted by Mount St. Mary College. So even before this pause started, we realized that our workshops and our special interest groups and everything was going to have to move online. And the first big event that we held online was the fifth annual CENICON conference. I know many of you were there and we have information up on our website about it too. All the presentations are still there. But Carolyn really quickly and amazingly took this conference online and with the willingness and the cooperation of the eight presenters. It was a great day. Um, and since then, since mid-March, we have offered 28 special interest group meetings for library support staff, directors, archivists, digitization members, resource sharing, reference, and technology. All of these were attended by hundreds of library workers. Um, we also tried something new by hosting these meetings that we call the member all call meetings. We've had 10 of these so far, and these are events where attendees share ideas for managing their services, and the, and the conversation has changed over you know, the, these 10 meetings, it started with how, how are we gonna do this to how are we gonna reopen our libraries? Um, and these have been really successful and we're gonna keep them up as long as people want to attend. We've had several guests, um, the one in, pictured here was when we had assembly member Jonathan Jacobson um, with us. And next week we have Scott, I'm gonna mess up his last name, Jerzombeck. Ger he is the director of the Li uh, Albany Public Library. He's gonna be our guest next Tuesday. And we also had three really successful webinars that we've done um, in April and May and early June. And adding them up, we've had over, and we you know, promote those statewide. We had over 700 people attend those webinars. So that's one of the things that we can do in this environment is we can just accommodate everybody who wants to come. Um, so in addition to all of these new ways of offering our professional development the last few months, we are continuing to provide all of our other services. Like to spend a few minutes talking about our hospital library services program. In July, we started a new service for hospitals called Vital Staffing. Sarah Holstead, our HLSP manager, who's with us here today as well, is also our vital librarian. Sarah, through a contract with three regional hospitals, supports these hospitals by providing library services and access to health information to the members of those hospitals. This is a new service that the board and um, our team at Southeastern worked on for many years. We started in July and it's been very successful thanks to Sarah's work with the three members. Sarah and Zach Spaulding, our systems manager, also support hospital library websites and online resources. Beginning last summer, hospitals started using a new discovery service and a web portal with a company called TDNet. And since March, Sarah has been maintaining a LibGuide with COVID-19 related resources. There's pages in there for medical resources and also pages in there for library staff. It's been very helpful. Um, know, to, to have all that in one place. Your resource sharing highlights. Um, as many of you know, the SEAL, the ILL component of SEAL has been on hold since we're not doing that right now, but it'll resume this summer. 
Um, some of the other things that Kelsey Milner, our resource sharing and cataloging librarian, has been working on is that she created a community and guest borrowing guide for our academic library so we can see all the academic libraries in the southeastern region and what their policies are for guests and letting guests borrow materials. It's been very helpful. Um, this year, she also introduced a SEAL newsletter and a resource guide for both SEAL and for resource sharing. And on the resource sharing LibGuide, she has all kinds of um, news and updated information about what's going on now during the, this pause time. And in her SEAL guide, she has a, some really great tutorials that she's created for SEAL. In digitization news, um, Jen Palmentero, our digital services manager, Kelsey and Zach completed the migration of collections from HRVH to New York Heritage. Last year, I mentioned that we were almost done. In September, that work was done. They migrated 73 collections to New York Heritage, which was a lot of cooperative work between the staff, between the folks who manage New York Heritage, and you, all of you. There were 73 collections that, that we migrated. So the result is that all of these collections are now listed with unique landing pages in New York Heritage. Um, yeah, well, I'll take a look at it if you have a chance. Um, and in addition to this work, we've supported the addition of new, pap new papers to New York State's, uh, sorry, to our HRVH historical newspapers. We've expanded the development of our Empire ADC project, and we've assisted members in creating new online exhibits. Um, these resources have definitely shown an uptick in statistics. I can't wait to kind of do a deep dive and really look at how they've changed. But the last few months, we've definitely had more usage of our collections, and um, many of you have also increased your contributions to the collections, including online exhibits, because this work really lends itself to being done remotely. And uh, I know as soon as things started in March and April, Jen and Kelsey were very busy assisting members with new collections. I'd just like to say a few words about advocacy. So as many of you know, library systems are primarily state funded. We have a responsibility to remind elected officials that libraries are for everyone, including college students and staff at hospitals. We visit elected officials in Albany for Advocacy Day every year to remind them of the value of libraries and ask for their support as they enter into the annual budget cycle. This is what we did last February when we visited Senator Jen Metzger and Senator James Skoufis, who are pictured here. And I know that room just looks extremely tightly packed now. Um, but this was Advocacy Day on February 25th. So even with our champions in the Senate and the Assembly, the challenges facing New York's libraries are enormous. At this point in time, we're facing a 3% cut to library aid, but this could change and we may be facing further reductions in state aid to libraries. So Southeastern's committees. These are the, these, all of our services and all of the things we do are provided with guidance and support from Southeastern's advisory committee. Pictured here is the Continuing Education Committee, which is chaired by Marla, Marla Gruner. And we also have a Digitization Committee, which is chaired by Morgan, who's also here today, Morgan Grenwald, and a Hospital Library Services Committee, chaired by Frank Appel, and a Resource Sharing Committee that's chaired by Stuart Moss. And the board. The Board of Trustees worked with us on the bigger issues that govern and administer the council. This past year, we completed a long list of renovations. We had a new roof, painting, exterior doors, and ramp. We have a whole list in, our, in the annual report. Um, but the board really helped guide us through this process and helped us figure out the money and how we're going to pay for it, and we managed to do it. Um, and I also want to recognize at this point the staff who helped with all of the renovations. Moshe Siegel, our office manager, he was the person who had to communicate with all of the vendors and the contractors and help with all the jobs and getting all the work done. And Liz Gurdon, our finance manager, she paid the bills and she helped manage all of the insurance for, this, for these projects. Um, this past year, trustees did a complete audit and revision of all the council's personnel policies. This was years in the works and we got it done this year. We also reviewed and updated many of the general counsel's policies like conflict of interest and whistleblower policies, all of which are you know, very important and vital to a nonprofit organization. This spring, the board approved an application for a CARES PPP loan for $108,000, um, which we did receive. And at our May board meeting, the trustees approved the budget for a new fiscal year. And as part of the budget, they agreed to keep membership dues at the same rate in the new fiscal year. So your dues aren't gonna go up next year. One other thing I'd like to mention is this summer we'll be reaching out to all of you to get your feedback on planning initiatives for the next five-year plan of service. Working with a consultant, Tracy Thompson, who I 
no register today. I haven't seen her name, but I think she might be here. We're going to be um, working with Tracy and creating a variety of ways to engage with you for our planning. So here's a board photo, another Zoom shot, but this is the board from the board meeting in May. Um, you're going to meet some of the trustees later today. You've already met Chuck. But I would like to thank all of our trustees. They are dedicated to helping Southeastern and they are very supportive of all of our council work. They donate a lot of time and a, not, a lot of knowledge to help govern the council. And last but not least, we have the Southeastern staff. This is our photo um, staff photo from Advocacy Day. Missing is Zach from the picture, but this is everybody else. What we're gonna do now is introduce you to everybody via, via video, if it works right. Okay, good morning everyone. I'd like to introduce you to Southeastern staff. This is the dedicated team who creatively and enthusiastically provide our services to you. And especially now, since we've adapted our services to meet your needs for working remotely. I'm incredibly proud of this team. They are awesome. And I want you to have a chance to meet them in person today. So we're taking this opportunity to say hello to all of you. Zach Spalding, Systems Manager. Jen Palmentero, Digital Services Manager. Hi, Carolyn Bennett Glauda, Librarian for Education and Outreach. Hi, Liz Gordon, Finance Manager. Kelsey Milner, Resource Sharing and Cataloging Librarian. Osha Siegel, Office Manager. Hi, I'm Sarah Holstead, Hospital Library Services Program Manager. Thanks, team. Now on to the rest of the annual meeting. Hope that was fun. <laughs> Okay, so we're so excited to see members actively engaged with Southeastern and with, with each other through partnerships, use of our services, programs and events. I urge you to become involved at any level, whether it's joining us at a special interest group meeting, becoming involved on a committee or something more formal. There's always more room at the table or in this case, more room on Zoom. I'm done with my annual report.